everybody. My name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. It's Tuesday night, my favorite day of the week. Get to come and play with you guys, and I'm so excited. There's two things that I have to admit that once I start playing with it, I get totally addicted. One is making paper. If you guys have not played with the Arnold Grummer paper making kits yet, gotta. Um, uh, and if you, the other one is my jelly plate. Gotta admit, love my jelly plate. This thing is so much fun. Waiting for to for Joe to show up. Um, we do have the questions going, so hopefully you guys have come in through Google and you have figured out how to ask me questions. I believe I have it figured out on my end, but we'll see. A <laughs> um, few quick business before we get going, and then I'll get right to business because I hate when people chit chat in the beginning. So. Um, one, Creative Paper Clay is having a design team call. So if you go over to creatingpaperclay.blogspot.com, you can check out their um, design team call. Um, what else is going on? Oh, I'm doing a napkin swap if anybody's interested in checking out the napkin swap. And you can find that on my uh, group page in Facebook, and that is called... Um, all Things Terry Sproul and Facebook. So check that out. I got three huge boxes in the mail today from Graphic 45. Yay! We all love Graphic 45s. Um, I'm hoping you guys are catching the questions. And I don't see any coming in yet, so I'm hoping somebody will just throw a question up just to say hi. Anyways, I got the Graphic 45 kits today, and I put one together pretty quickly, but not completely. Um, so it still needs some fibers, but I wanted to show you how much you're getting in this kit. And tell you when it'll be available. It'll probably be available this upcoming weekend, Joe? Uh, that's probably true, yep. Okay. We should have it on Joe's website available for you to purchase. And the kit comes with a lot, and I'm about ready to show you that. And I'm going to switch over real quickly and sh let Joe come on and let him show you what the finished project is, and then I'll show you what the kit comes with. You're going to be amazed how much comes here. So I'm going to switch cameras and let Joe. Are you ready for me, Joe? Show I am as ready for you as I could ever be. You better be, baby. Woo! Hold on. Okay, here's Joe, guys. Okay, you should be up. Well, hello. Did you switch to me? I did switch to you. You are up. Go ahead. Okie doke. So this is Steampunk Spells. Now, this book was designed by Laura Dennison, so I want to be sure to give Laura credit. She does phenomenal work. But this is a big, big book. And I can't find my ruler here, but you can see the size of my hand against the book. Look how thick that spine is. So this is a really nice thick book. There's a hard cover here, and there's a lot of room in here for the pages. Hopefully you can get an idea of how thick that is with the pages. There are six pages in it, and here's an example of what the pages are. And they have a really neat shape. You can see here um, how they're shaped, this little notch down here. And there's a place here for a large tag that you get to decorate and the small tag that you get to decorate. So there's six pages like that. Um, it comes with stickers. I never got my stickers in, but little round steampunk spell stickers that you can put here on what Laura calls the suspender straps. And then lots of fibers to put on all your little tags. So you've got six large tags, six small tags, six pages in the book, plus the hard front cover and spine. Um, the retail value alone of all the product in the kit is, I forget Terry, wasn't it thirty two seventy five? Yes. This is a 6x6 pad, an 8x8 pad, the large chipboard tag album, the small chipboard tag album, chipboard tag accessories and stickers. I'm going to show all that here. So Terry's going to show you all this. A fabulous, fabulous project. Wonderful book. And then, of course, once you learn this technique and how you build the pages and glue them into the spine, you could do it with any kind of paper you'd like. Did I do okay, Vanna? How's my Vanna? You did well. If you'd buy me a large ring, it would show really well. <laughs> no, it's supposed to go the other way around here, dear. Remember, you buried me. Anyways, guys, thank you very much. 
that is a fantastic book. I want to say hello to Vanessa's in the room, and and I, Karen has posted, so I did see you. I want to say welcome, and if anybody else puts their name up, I can say welcome to them. I'm gonna switch cameras real quick, show you what that book is. That book is a nine by six, by the way. It's quite large. So let me show you what the kit is gonna have in it, and we're selling this kit for. Um, I believe we decided on $32, and that's going to include the class. I'm going to do a class on a Saturday morning, and um, it's going to come with fibers, but it's going to come with more than this because I didn't actually, this is kind of my, I just guesstimated in there. It's going to, I know I need more fibers than that, so it comes with fibers. It comes with quite a few of the 6x6 pieces of paper. I believe there's 12 here. You get... Um, Quite a few, I believe this was 12 also, of the uh, 8 by 8 papers. You're going to get the chipboard to do the covers and the spine. You get these, uh, these are called their border stickers. And they're actually two sets of stickers. So you have this side and that side. And you're getting these chipboard with more than that stickers. Like, actually, this is kind of my, I just, okay. Chipboard stickers. Okay, so these are actually their hard chipboard. Hi, Peggy. Um, it comes with two sets of tags. And then it comes with two, with this large set of stickers. These are stickers all die cut it out for you. So we're going to have that on um, Joe's website by most likely this upcoming weekend. And then I will let you know what date we will be doing our project in. What date? It will be a Saturday. We will be doing it for two hours um, on the internet. So I, we will definitely be doing a class on that, and I'll teach you exactly how to make the book. Okay, wanted to show you my finished page from last week. Really love the way this turned out. Okay, so that's that. I did do. We are playing in my new journal tonight. Couple pay I wanted to show you this. I thought this turned out so pretty. Isn't this one pretty? Hi, Vanessa. This is I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. And I've got these really cool stickers from... Um, uh, a test. I'll put it on my blog. But they are... They build. So you take this, the flowers and put build on top of each other. So that's how I did the roses in there. I just thought it turned out really pretty. So the roses are all three-dimensional. I like the way that page turned out. So anyways, let's get down to business. I want to play my with... Oh, let me grab this stuff up here. We are going to... I'm so excited. Play in the jelly plate tonight. Uh, get your jelly plates. Uh, Alter Pages has one. Um, also, you can get them... I guess a couple people had trouble finding them at Michael's, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I thought it was in the art section, but maybe I'm wrong. When you do get your jelly plate, you want to keep this plastic part that's very important. Uh, this is only directions, so I can keep that in there. You want to always store your jelly plate back the way you get it. When you get it, it comes with two plastic covers. You want to keep these all together, and the back one. Okay, so I got two plastic covers, and then it says to put it on a um, something that's non-absorbent. So the uh, Teflon sheet would work. I like to use a piece of glass only because I can pick it up and take it with me. This Teflon sheet is actually glued down to my desk, so not glued down, but it's permanently down. Um, so I use this piece of glass because I can just pick it up and take it, you know, off the desk if I need to when I'm ready to do the next procedure. So that's why I use this glass, but that's the only reason. Let's see if I can get that glare off there. There we go. Much better. Okay. I love my jelly plate, guys. I hope you guys have um, found it and started playing with it. The only thing you need is a brayer. That is important. Now, this particular journal is the exact same size as my jelly plate. So I love that because I can make my backgrounds, do a bunch of backgrounds, and then come back later and do um, something over those backgrounds because I do do that. Um, there's one that I 
haven't done anything with yet. Uh, this one right here, I actually did the background weeks ago, and I just finally put something on top of it. This is all done with the jelly plate. And I can show you guys so many ideas on what to do with this jelly plate. I just kind of want you guys to tell me at the end of tonight um, if you want to learn more techniques using the jelly plate or not. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Julia, had you have problems um, logging in, but thank you for taking um, showing up and all that good stuff. Thank you, Peg. I appreciate that you stopped in, and Vanessa, and... I'm sorry that you had problems. And Cynthia, welcome. Where do you get the kits? The kits are going to be available on Create and Craft. Thank you for that question. And that's createandcraft.com. I will have that on my um, blog for you guys tomorrow. Okay, when you use your jelly plate, this is actually one that you can... Um, Um, this is actually one that you can use cheaper paints with because cheaper paints, and I'm not you know, particularly saying this is a cheaper paint, but they have a lot more water in them. So you want to have paints that are very um, water-based. And a lot of, if you buy like um, Goldens, some of them say, this one says a fluid acrylic, but some of them say open acrylic. The ones that say open, see where it says fluid right there? The ones that say open those stay longer, um, wet longer. If you're having trouble getting your paints to stay wet, say you're in a very hot area like Arizona or something, you can put glazing medium or you can put a retardant into your paint before you put it on your jelly plate. But you usually don't have too much trouble with that. Try it out and let me know. I'm sorry, Katie. Uh, Kate. Kitty, that you had trouble getting in. I hope that it worked out better for you. Um, no problem, Gloria. Glad to see you here. Welcome. Okay. So those are the two products that you can add to your paints if need be. You will see I probably will not use either one of those tonight, but I wanted to tell you that. Now you need very, very little paint when you work with your, um, your uh, jelly plate, which is very cool. So I start off with, I'm going to use pink tonight. I'm going to be kind of wild. Very Two little drops. I'm just making sure that wasn't a, uh, not an air bubble, but a thick piece. You know how you get those paints and get all thick. So I'm going to get a couple things there, and I think I'm going to do yellow also. So just a couple drops is really all you need. So you see how little paint I have on here. Now you want to have your brayer. And you just start putting gray in your paints on. I actually probably have a little too less. I might want more, more yellow than that. So I actually did get a little too... Uh, and I do kind of... When I first put it on, and this isn't always, because play with this. This is just one of those things that you can play with. Sometimes I'll do what I'm doing here, only spread my yellow, and then go in and start spreading my pink. Some, and other times I don't. Sometimes I just go in it and just see what I come up with. Now, the other thing that you got to think when you use your jelly plate, you got to think backwards. So this is going to be the, the furthest thing on my page. So I'm going to grab my art journal. And i got to stand up for this to make sure I get it perfectly. And I'm just going to lay it directly onto my page. And I'm just going to rub. And this is basically doing a print directly onto my paper. And I lift that up, and I get that. Isn't that pretty? So that's a great start for a background. Now let's get a little more advanced. I'm going to use the exact same colors again just because they're convenient. I like these colors anyways. And we're going to start getting into a little more... Oh, look how cool that looks. Now, I've got color on the back. 
and I'm going to grab a stencil. I like to grab the largest stencils I have usually, and I'm just going to lay that on there. Okay? Now, from this point, I can add all kinds of more texture on here. Here's a really cheap, inexpensive way. Oh, parts of, uh, our parts of Florida, the paint actually do stay longer. But if it's, it's a good idea if you are having problems. These are, um, I took my embossing folders, and I took, took regular cardstock paper, and I just imprinted a bunch of my embossing folders onto cardstock. So then what I'm going to do is use these to imprint into my paper. So I can just go like this and go right onto the background. And I'm going to switch up. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry that Joe isn't here. He'd laugh. When we were in Vegas, I found this on the ground. This is actually, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's a piece of grating or something. So I'm going to press that in. When I was back in scrapbooking, I had these really cool, I don't even know what it's for, but it's plastic and it's raised. So that can be, that can give me texture. I'm going to get that in there. So you can use all kinds of things to get texture. Now at this point, I could actually lift that up and take a print, or I could take a print on it. And at this point, I think I'm actually just going to use some white paper for you guys. I see me making a lot of these tonight. So I'm going to take my white paper. So you guys who are making journals on your own, this is a great technique to get some background. Rub and lift. And I get that. Now I lift this off, and that I can actually put inside of a journal page right now and use it. Take another piece of paper, and I have a whole new print right there. So you can get multiple prints off of one sheet. Oh, back out there. Sorry, about guys. I don't know what happened there, sorry. There we go. And lift that out. And look at that print. Isn't that beautiful? Pack rat, yes, I am a pack rat, absolutely. And these dry super, super quick because there's very little paint on here. So that's already dry. So it's, that's what's kind of cool. Now I can do another layer on top of that. I can leave this as is because this paint will actually... Um, you know, actually what I want to do is put, you can also at this point put in um, masks. You can use a mask that you, oh, wait a minute, I want this over. Mask that you have or one that you make. So I'm going to put a mask on there. What I mean by one that I made, these are just white pieces of paper that I punched out um, some circles. I'm going to use these as masks. I also have some squares and some smaller circles. I think I'm going to go with the circles. Okay, so now I put my green paint on. I'm going to quickly roll off my brayer a little bit. I'm just cleaning my brayer on the side here. And I'm going to put some green paint right over the masks and everything I just used. And it's going to pick up all of these things that I have shown. Okay, now I'm going to go and put, I'm going to use that one again. Go right on top of that. A lot of times what I'll do if I'm going to use this, I'll use my brayer and clean my brayer off at the same time. And I've got a new background going right there. Lift this one up. See how you can see the mask there? And the dots. Now I can come back and pull these dots off. Or if I don't if I want to start clean, what I usually will do is just basically just take some water, spray my um, sheet off, and just clean it off with uh, towel towelettes or something that you have in your studio. Some people actually will even use a um, cloth 
and let that paint build up on that cloth and use that as a background in the future. When you do clean your um, your look, it looks like I had a face. When you do clean your jelly plate, I take it into the sink and I take a mild detergent like Dawn and um, just a towel and just wipe it off. You don't want to go into this really deeply um, because it will. It's it's very fragile. You don't want to like dig into it. You love the collection of tools. Me too. I love all my fun tools in my studio. Let's go with this blue. I'm going to use blue and pink. Actually, let me put this pink looks like it's so thick. Okay, where'd my brayer go? Brayer. Go in with my brayer again. See what I mean by this is completely addicting? And then you can go in with texture tools like this and do some little bit of, actually let's, before I do that, let me do some more background. Joe, you weren't here a second ago when I used this. I bet you remember this lovely little tool I picked up when we were in Vegas. I do. I do. Wait, who picked it up? Wait a minute. <laughs> well, you're the one that suggested I should grab it. Well, I do try to teach you whenever I have a teachable moment. <laughs> God forbid. We don't like to have too many teachable moments. So I'm just basically putting a lot of... And look how cool these back, how cool that's going to look. Because it's picking up the uh, paint. Okay, like like you. Now you can use these texture tools. And you don't want to have anything that's real um, hard. You want things that are soft. And come in and put some wavy lines. I need a little more texture right here. Okay, this is going to be a pretty print right here. I'm going to like this one. Okay. I think that one even should go into my art journal. I'm going to like it so much. A clean piece of paper. Press on. Let's give it a good rub, especially in that center spine. I love the fact that this journal is the exact same size as this jelly plate. <laughs> Look at that. Is that just awesome or what? That's just awesomeness. Now think about that. There's so many more layers. And I can still get another print off of what I just did. That right there still has um, lots of stuff on it. So I can go in there and put that down. Roll on back. And lift this up. Oh, there wasn't that much on there. but Now if I don't clean, that'll actually come up again when I put more um, paint on because paint will make the paint that's on there wet again so it'll self excited I guess is a good word for it but I am going to put my little mask girl on what colors did I just use there so that turned out to be mainly look at that that turned out so cool any questions so far Pretty easy to do. Yes, that is the Dilution um, small journal. Yes. So, I mean. And I still have those for 20% off, Terry. Well, there you go. 20% off over at Crate and Craft. Got it. Let me go make sure that coupon still works. Be yes, right make sure that coupon works. And you would use the coupon code Terry Sproul, one word. And you can get your art journal over there. And he also will take orders for the dilution sprays if you're interested in them also. That, I think, um, if I believe correctly, we are on, or he's on pre-order on that. Now, also, before you take a print, sometimes you can go in and lift um, the mask up. See that? Perfect there. And now I'm going to go in and print on top of this. Let me make sure my book's going the right way. 
There we go. Oh, getting a good. Sometimes with the uh, paper, these books, you have to rub a little harder because you're going through a lot. But the pieces of paper, you don't have to rub as hard. Oh, 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 look at that. Look how cool that looks. Now you see all the texture? It's still in there. Love the way that one worked. Okay. Um, what else can you do with these things? Wow, I have two places in my studio for art now. I can stuff more shirts. Oh, very cool. Sounds like you got a bigger studio recently. That's fun. Good for you. You could also use leaves to press into and get the um, vines. Like you, I would press in the back part here where the vines are more um, pronounced and get a print that way. So I could show you that. Actually, let me go in and put these on there too, because I want fresh ones. So if you want to have some leaves in there, so you can use um, all kinds of stuff that you have from your studio. I didn't clean my brayer off. It's got all kinds of fun colors on it. But that's okay. That's what's fun. So you could use uh, like a leaf to get an imprint. It's really hard for you to see. You could use a bottle cap. But again, remember you don't want to go too deeply into here because you don't want to ruin your jelly plate. Um, you can use stamps to get texture into your background. Remember to wash your stamps when you're done, though, because that is, um, uh, you know, wet paint that you stuck on there. I do have rubber-only uh, stamps, so I can just throw them into water if I want it to and clean them. Looks like a lot of my paint dried, but still got a very cool background. I could punch uh, letters out. You can see the stamped image right there. So you can see how the stamp works. Right there is where I use the bottle cap. And this dries almost instantly. So that's very nice. So you can do a lot and continue to put layer upon layer. Okay, let me take these off. Let's get some more fun colors over here. I'm getting bored of the colors I have already. Um, Oh, let's grab some purple and some blue. And let's see what, okay. Um, yes, the uh, small journal is Dilutions. Kitty. If I didn't say that already. Um, their big journal uh, would also work fine. It's just that I just like the fact that this jelly plate, and this is the bigger jelly plate, um, is exactly the same size has my uh, journal. I just I just thought that was just the coolest thing ever. Pink and purple this time. Because I can. Oh, we're going to make an Easter egg. So this one, I am, I've got a lot more paint on, so it'll stay wet for me really long. So I can go in and do a lot of uh, texturing. And I remember the cheap way to do that is to use these uh, from your embossing plates or embossing folders that you have. You can get some great texture that way. Also you could use bubble wrap, you could use um, uh, more temp, more. We have all kinds of templates that you have. Um, 
just keep having fun. Just keep pressing in there. Oh, this one's going to be pretty, too. <laughs> okay, new page. So you see how you could get a lot of background pages done? Say you're going on vacation or you have to go visit your um, uh, crate and craft. I believe it's, uh, is it, uh, Joe, is it an A-N-D or is it? No, it's create, C-R-E-A-T-E, -E, create, the letter N like Nancy, craft, C-R-A-F-T dot com, create, the letter N, craft dot com. So I hope that helped out. Just had that question. So again, look how pretty that background is. And then again, I can still do a pull off this. And this is just leftover paint on my jelly plate. So again, pulling up paint. That's a good idea right there. Let me show you that. You don't always have to do the whole jelly plate. Say you just wanted to highlight something. You could go just down the center of your jelly plate or whatever and do a design just like that. You don't have to do the whole jelly plate. So say you want to get something exciting going on right there in the center. Make the stars. And Terry, I've seen some amazing work where people mask out parts of the plate to get real sharp lines and uh -huh. it's just fascinating. Me too. One of my favorites, if you guys have a chance, get a, uh, check out Andy Skinner. He does some amazing things with the jelly plate, with masking it out and putting layers upon layers and just doing some really fun stuff. See, look at that. Isn't that fun? I just love that. <laughs> so exciting. So then I can print it again here. And look at, the, see, even the back, so if you are making your own journal, I've got a background started here, and I've got a background started here. So this is half my work already done for me. Then if you're on a plane, you could be coloring in stamps or you can add stuff to it. This is something that I haven't showed you guys. And this is how to make your own stamp. This is called Stamp Magic and it's kind of a foam. And what you do is you heat it with your heat gun and then you can press it into any... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Any type of texture and it'll make the texture. So you could even do it on, say, a set of pearls. You could lay a set of pearls out and you could um, press into it. So what you do is you heat it up with your heat gun for about 30 seconds-ish. And then you can press it into a um, you know, like I said, cloth or anything to make an image, and it takes it instantly. So now I have a stamp. Now what's cool about this is if I heat it again, it goes back to original, so I don't lose this. It never gets bad. You know what I'm saying? It's always there. So now I've just made this piece of junk that I picked up into a stamp for my jelly plate. So that is a fun idea. Let me grab my jelly plate, put it back up here, and let's play again. Um, use, let's go with blue and yellow. You can also kind of um, block things out. What do I mean by that? Like I could put multiple colors on here. And then, with my brayer, say go in and just brayer in the colors into a section. Blue is very, very watery. So it doesn't get very thick. So I got my blue into that section. And say, now I'm going to come over and get more blue over here. Okay, cleaning off my brayer in between 
Now I'm going to try to grab just that pink and keep it right there in that center. And you do, we are going to end up overlapping a little bit. But you see where I'm going, how I'm keeping my colors separate basically and ending it with my yellow over here. And if you feel like something's drying out, you can always just very light mist of water will reactivate all of your paints. And then you can go in and um, do your print. But again, I can come in now and do some fun drawings into it. You can use a um, even a pen. But again, you don't want to go real sharply into it. So you can do jiggly lines. You could put dots. That's always fun too. You see how when I picked up there, now I have pink paint. If I print it over here, the pink paint's going to land over there. See it? So that's kind of fun because then it kind of mixes for you and does a lot of fun stuff. And then I can go in and do my print. You can do letters, but it's kind of, um, you kind of do things backwards when it comes to letters. Rubber bands placed horizontally. Oh, very cool. Um, Peg just has an awesome idea there about using rubber bands, place them horizontally and vertically, get a really cool print. So you guys can, I mean, you're imagining, and I didn't even use my new stamp. Damn. I'll use it on this one. Again, see all that cool stuff? Me going backwards again. Okay. If you want a little less intense color, use some glaze, clear glaze mixed in with that paint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely you can use, like he was just saying, the glaze right into your paint. You can mix it off, but, you know, I'm not going to. I want to use this blue. I haven't used this blue yet. This is a... Uh, Really pretty. What color is this? I haven't even opened it yet. It's a multi-surface one, so it should stay wet really long. Pretty blue anyways. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, except for I have yellow on my thing. That's okay. There's that stamp I just made. See how cool that turned out? And then again, I'm just going to um, love this texture one from Sin This is uh, Sin City Stamps uh, background stamp. It's all uh, crackle. Again, you'll want to make sure you get your stamps clean when you're done. Because you don't want to ruin your stamps. And these, this is something, I, seriously, I don't even know why I bought this for scrapbooking. I probably would have, I never used it. But now I like it for a texture plate. Oh, this is something I want to show you next. Oh, this is a cool idea. So let me pull this one. Actually, let me put that on top of here. Why not? Use die cut letters, place them backwards, should do the trick. Exactly, Gloria. Um, actually, you put them forward. But actually, it's the opposite of what you think. So there's more of a print on top of the other one I had. So you see, you still see all the layers from um, below, which I think is cool. Um, let me clean this plate and show you this other cool idea. And this is again kind of using things as a mask. Okay, while I'm cleaning here, let me give my winners. I promised you guys two winners. Uh, a couple things too. Let me refresh your memory. If you go to sincitystamps.com, we have a coupon for you for 30% off good till October 1st. And that is. Um, the coupon code is P as in Paul, or P as in Pam, B as in Bray, uh, Fall, 
um, is the coupon, and that's worth 30% off of any stamps that you want to buy over at Sin City. And tonight's winner is going to receive, I actually have two winners. One's going to receive the um, a set of stamps from, actually, they're both going to receive a set of stamps, a whole plate from Pam Bray from Sin City Stamps. And the winners are, because we only had a few people uh, actually participate this week. If you are interested in playing along, join in on my group called All Things Terry Sproul and place your pages up. I realize we're not doing a page tonight. If you do not have a um, jelly plate and you still want to play, just put up a journal page. You'll still be qualified. And the winners are Robin, and I'm going to totally blow your name again, is H-O-R-A-S-A-N-I-A-N. -A -A Robin, she won. And my other winner is Karen, and again, I'm going to blow these last names, and it's Buck, Buckingham, B-U-C-H-A-N-A-N. -A -A -N. I apologize that I blew your names, guys. Okay, what I'm doing this time is what I need both of you to do is email me or catch me on Facebook with your address. I got a doily. This is one of those cheap plastic ones. I think I got it at the 99 cent store. You get a whole package of them. I'm going to put it over a corner of my plate here. And then I'm going to go in with my brayer. And yes, I have pink still on there, but I don't care. Go in with my brayer and brayer all over. And I even want to get into those grooves, the little holes. I want to get in the groove. It's a problem with the jelly plate is once you get in the groove, you're in the groove. You're um, in the groove, baby. I'm you're in the you're groove. Cool. You're bad. I knew, I knew you was grooving, baby. I'm grooving now, baby. I knew you was, you're on the love shack next, baby. Yep. <laughs> grooving along. Now, this print I'm going to do with it actually on there. Okay. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Really, really cool. Now, the next time I could do something similar, but take it off. So let's do that again. This pink is really thick. So I'm making sure that I'm getting into those those holes there so that it takes the, uh, it's going to grab that print. So when I take it off, look. Isn't that cool? Now, when I make my print, I think I'm going to do it the opposite corner. This time, see how it's just a little different? It's more of a shadow this time. And I went over that other one, which still gave me that cool effect. Look how pretty that is. Love that one. Okay. Since I have paint on there, I'm going to use it. Does anybody have any questions on the jelly plate? There are some websites that you can go to that you can make your own jelly plate. Um, I hear they don't last very long, so that would be my one concern. And to me, if I'm going to spend my time making something, I want it to last. If you take care of this plate, it will last you. So there would be the advantage of getting a real jelly plate instead of um, making your own. Uh, like I said, Altered Pages has them. Um, I know Dick Blix has them. I know that one for a fact. If you do live by a Dick Blix, I got an email today that in-store only is 30% off on this Thursday. So if you do need a, um, uh, it's off your whole order too, so it's not just part of your order. So if you are needing something, <laughs> like we ever need anything, but you know what I mean. If you <laughs> are wanting a jelly plate, um, you could pick one up at Dick Blix on Thursday. You deserve a jelly plate. You do. You deserve it. Because they're just way too much fun not to have. 
I will say though, I one was at a demo table I was at, and someone put an iron on it. That is not a good combination. Oh yeah, you do not want to get these hot at all. No heat guns, no nothing. You can make your own washi paper um, tape out of this. It's really fun. Um, you can print on fabric. It doesn't have to be paper. You can take and make a really cool print on a big piece of canvas, fold the canvas in half, and make yourself a tote bag. And if you use studio cloth from US ArtQuest, it doesn't fray. There you go. And that's even better. US ArtQuest, and it is usartquest.com. They that studio paper or studio cloth is probably one of my favorite um, products as far as being able to it's a it's like a canvas in a way, but it's soft like um, I don't even know how to explain it. You can, but you can stamp on it really easily. You can put paint on it. Look how cool that one turned out. So you can just keep having fun over these and over these. And again, I've made just a couple backgrounds that I can go in now and just have fun with. Let me move this out of my way real quick and. We'll play a little bit on this art journal. Now, I didn't grab a whole lot of stuff for tonight because I actually planned on just art journal or making backgrounds. But let me. Whoa. Crash, bang, boom. Now, I can come in and start doodling over this page and just start having fun. First thing I probably would do is come in and outline her with my black pen. But you wouldn't have to do a black pen. You could do any type of pens that you want to use. Just to make her stand out a little more, I'm going to outline her. And this will make a big difference because she'll really pop now. Oh, yes, it does make beautiful fabric, Gloria. You would just absolutely love doing, I believe, um, if I remember correctly, uh, Joe, you had demoed using the jelly plate at a show somewhere back east, and you did it on fabric. Yeah, it was the National Quilt Association's annual show, and I made fabric all day with jelly plates and perfect pigments, and I used a glaze so that I thinned it a little bit, but I would jelly plate it to create a background and then start just layering, just like you would on paper, but it's fabric instead of paint. Mm -hmm. So think about that, guys. I mean, this is really completely endless. There's little squares here I could come in and do some um, journaling or some just doodling on. So kind of like zing tangle it afterwards. Just have fun. I mean, there is no right or wrong when you start jelly plating. So just keep going in and having fun. So I always do that. See if I can see if I can get it the right way. Oh, I did it the right way. I'm so proud of myself. So down here, there's a lot of these little squares, and I'm using um, these are Jelly Extremes, and they're actually from uh, the company that I am doing the design team with right now, and it's uh, Yokosomo, and it's the Niji line, and these are their Jelly Roll Extreme pens. And I thought they'd be a lot of fun because they're bright colors, and I was using bright colors tonight. They actually have a neon package. And since I'm kind of going kind of neon here, <laughs> I'm kind of going for it. Um, I could come into her and do a bunch of doodling in the inside of her dress. You know, just having fun and just doodle. So this is, like I was saying, when you're on a plane or something, or you're in a doctor's office, this is when you can take your backgrounds that you've made and take some pens and just play. So think about it, guys. You don't really have to do sit down and do a whole background, finish it that day. Go in and do a couple backgrounds, enjoy yourself, and then go back some other day and actually fill in it and make a cool page. Is there any other questions? Because I'm actually going to uh, end here if anybody doesn't have any questions. I agree that the fabric would be absolutely beautiful. Tell me, I, I, you do need to tell your husband that you deserve one because I agree. 
uh, coupons for Michaels, absolutely. But like I said, um, some people were telling me today that they were having problems finding it at Michaels, so I apologize for that. I'm trying to go through all the questions, make sure I didn't miss any. If I did miss your question, if you could put it up right now, I will try to answer it before I switch cameras and say goodnight to you guys. I found an acrylic fabric paint medium you mix with colored paint and you can use. Oh, very cool. Gloria was just saying that she found some acrylic fabric paints. Um, they actually do have a medium also out. Um, I, I, you might know this already, Gloria, but just for everybody else in the audience, as you know, I'm a medium fan. You can actually buy a medium. This is not it. That's designed specifically for fabric. So you can take that medium, add your acrylic paints that you already have at home, and it'll make it a fabric paint. So. Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure... <sighs> Honestly, guys, we only have one Hobby Lobby in our town, and I don't get to it too often, so I'm not sure. Um, do I? Yes, I absolutely do clean my stencils. There are lots of people that do not clean their stencils. I'm one of these people that believe strongly that you take care of the tools that you have, so I clean stamps. I know there's people out there that don't clean their stamps, Mr. Tim Holtz, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> I clean my products because I believe I want them to last forever. Um, I'm not sure about the Hobby Lobby. I apologize on there. I know Dick Blix has it on their website. I know that alteredpages.com has them. Hope that helps. Um, I do clean my stencils. I will take them out directly after this show, throw them in a sink full of water, and scrub them in the morning. <laughs> be to be honest. <laughs> you know, once you clean them, that would be the perfect perfect time then to send them to me. <laughs> yeah, right. I just sent you a package. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, I'm gonna send you love, darling. There's your package. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I get. Uh, what if you when you come to visit? I may not let you go home. Oh, <laughs> I might not want to go home. <laughs> I've got so many activities for us and artists to visit, studios we're going to craft in together. Maybe we could do some live shows from some of my friends' studios. Oh, I hope so. I will be letting you guys know real soon when we're going to do the Graphic 45 thing. It'll probably be in about a month, so that would give you guys time to get your packages. So that's why I'm thinking about a month out. It will be Saturday. Um, any questions? I'm going to say goodbye. I'm assuming not, so good night. Thank you again. If you are watching this not live, give me a thumbs up, please. I need my Google ratings to go up, so give me a thumbs up, even you guys who are watching. If you go back and watch this as a replay, um, give me a thumbs up. Please. And don't forget to think about Steampunk Spells. Yes, uh, Steampunk Spells is actually... Um, the name of that kit, so get your kits in. As soon as Joe gets it up, I will put it up on the group and in my um, on my uh, Facebook page. So I will make sure you have links directly to get the kits. They're going to be fun. Talk to you guys later. Bye!